How's it going, everyone? Austin Honecker here. I just wanted to come on here for a while and give them a review for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Rampage Grand Slam from two nights ago, which was September 24th, 2021. I gotta say, it was awesome from start to finish. For the matches, match one, it was CM Punk versus Powerhouse Hobbs. That was a great match, but the ending to it, CM Punk went over with the GTS. Match two, it was the Super Click, which are Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, and Adam Cole versus Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express, which are Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. That was a great match, but the ending to it, the super click went over cause Adam Cole pinned Luchasaurus with the boom. Match three, it was, yeah, that was match two by the way. Match three, yep, yeah, match, match three, it was the men of the year, which are Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page versus the inner circle, which are Chris Jericho and Jake Hager, that was a great match, but the ending to it, Men of the Year went over cause Scorpio Sky pinned Jake Hager with a small package. Or well, after the match, Chris Jericho and Jake Hager, well, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page were celebrating and Chris Jericho and Jake Hager attacked Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page from behind and beat the shit out of them. And then uh, after Chris Jericho and Jake Hager beat the shit out of Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, Chris Jericho and Jake Hager got a hold of Dan Lambert, pulled him in the ring, and were getting ready to beat the shit out of him. But the American Top Team, which are Junior Dos Santos, Andre Arlovsky, Austin Vonderford, Adam Jodas, Paige Van Zant, and Jorge Masvidal came through the crowd, and the men of the year, Dan Lambert, and the American Top Team all surrounded the ring. Well, Dan Lambert was already in the ring, but the men of the year and the, the American Top Team all surrounded the ring and got in the ring and the men of the year and the American top team beat the shit out of Chris Jericho and Jake Hager and, and, uh, and, uh, everything. And then, um, and then, uh, after the Amer well, uh, Austin Vonderford done a double leg takedown on Jake Hager and, Junior Dos Santos was beating the shit out of Chris Jericho, and so was the rest. And uh, but all the American Top Team, so Ju Junior Dos Santos, Andre Arlovsky, and Austin Vonderford were beating the shit out of Jake Hager, and also beating the shit out of Chris Jericho. So was Adam Jodas. He was beating the shit out of Chris Jericho too, and Paige Paige Van Zant done some body blows to Chris Jericho, beating the shit out of him because Jake Hager was already laid out. But Paige Van Zant attacked Chris Jericho with some body blows, like body punches to the stomach and everything. And then Jorge Masvidal done a running knee strike to Chris Jericho and laid him out. And so Dan Lambert, the American top team, and, and well, Dan Lambert, the American top team, and men of the year all stood tall while Chris Jericho and Jake Hager were laid out and everything. That was cool. Match four, it was the Lucha Brothers, which are Ray Phoenix and Pena El Cerro Mieto, and Proud and Powerful, which are Santana and Ortiz, versus the Hardy Family Office, which are Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, The Butcher and The Blade, that was a great match, but the ending to it, the Lucha Brothers and Proud and Powerful went over cause 
Santana pinned Mark Quinn with the Street Sweeper from Santana and Ortiz. That was match four, by the way. Match five. Match five. It yeah. Match five. It was. Yeah. Match five. It was Penelope Ford versus Anna J. That was a great match, but the ending to it, Penelope Ford went over with a due to a with a punch in the face with brass knuckles. Well, after the match, the Bunny and Penelope Ford beat the, were beaten. Well, the Bunny got in the ring after the match, and the Bunny and Penelope Ford beat the shit out of Anna J. And then Ty Conti came out to even the odds you know, beating the shit out of both the Bunny and Penelope Ford, but Ty Con but Penelope Ford ended up attacking Ty Conti with the brass knuckles, with a punch in the face with brass knuckles and everything as well. So Ty Conti and Anna J were laid out by Penelope Ford and the Bunny, and then the Hardy family office, which are Matt Hardy, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, the Butcher and the Blade all came out on the stage and and guarded the ring. Well, the best friends, which are Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander came out, and then the Dark Order, which are John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Five and Ten came out, and then the rest of the Dark Order, which are Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, and Colt Cabana came out as well. Well, the best friends and the and the Dark Order came out to the ring to try to even the odds, but the Hardy family office, which are Matt Hardy, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, The Butcher, The Blade, The Bunny, and Penelope Ford, all retreated. And um, Chris Statlander was tended to Anna Jay and Ty Conti, and then, um, but Orange Cassidy was just standing there, like, what, he, he, Orange, Orange Cassidy was standing there, and... Um, and, uh, Alex Reynolds tried to bury the hatchet with Evil Uno, but Evil Uno walked out of the ring, and then Stu Grayson followed behind him, and then Colt Cabana was all confused as the rest of the Dark Order, which are John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Five and Ten, but Colt Cabana ended up leaving the ring while Five, while John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Five and Ten were still in the ring and everything. Chet was cool. And match six, yeah, that was match that was match five, by the way. And match six, which was the main event, it was John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus Suzuki Goon, which are Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki in a lights out match. That was a great match, but the ending to it. John Moxley and Eddie Kingston stood tall. Wait, 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 wait. Match six, which was the main event, it was John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus Suzuki Goon, which are Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki. That wait. Match six, which was the main event, it was John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus Suzuki Goon, which are Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki in a lights out match. That was a great match, but the ending to it, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston went over cause Eddie Kingston placed a trash can on Lance Archer's head and then Eddie Kingston took a kendo stick and was hitting Lance Archer in the head numerous times with it and then Eddie Kingston got the pin and everything. And after the match, John Moxley and Minoru Suzuki continued to brawl outside of the ring, but then John Moxley got back in the ring while Minoru Suzuki was outside the ring pissed off, and Homicide celebrated with John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, but the thing is, Homicide interfered in the match to take it to fight off Suzuki Goon to help John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. So, but Homicide celebrated with John Moxley and Eddie Kingston after the match and everything. That was cool. Um, 
Now, besides the matches, AEW aired a vignette of Thunder Rosa, Jade Cargill, along with Mark Sterling, and Nyla Rose, along with, with, along with Vicky Guerrero. Well, Thunder Rosa was, set, was talking about how she had two senoritas, which are Nyla Rose and Jade Cargill after her and everything, and talked about how she wasn't afraid of Nyla Rose and Jade Cargill because she was going to take them out and everything. And then Jade Cargill was talking about how she was going to take out Thunder Rosa and then talked about how Nyla Rose betrayed her and everything and how she was going to kick her ass and everything as well. And Nyla Rose was talking about how she was going to kick both Thunder Rosa and Jade Cargill's asses and everything as well. That was cool. Tony Schiavone interviewed Matt Hardy and Jack Evans, and Tony Schiavone was bringing up about the Hardy family office losing to the Lucha Brothers and Proud and Powerful in the eight-man tag team match and everything, and then Matt Hardy was, say, was saying, yeah, Tony, the Hardy family office lost, and I'm pissed off. But... We got one more match with the Hardy family office, and that's Penelope Ford against Anna Jay, and Penelope Ford is going to kick Anna Jay's ass. But also, another thing that pisses me off is Orange Cassidy, and next week, I want Orange Cassidy in a hair versus hair match against Jack Evans. And then Jack Evans was... was all confused and didn't want to do the match. And then Matt Hardy said, you will do great, Jack, and you better win, Jack, and everything. That was cool. Sammy Guevara and Fuego Del Sol came out on stage, and Sammy Guevara and Fuego Del Sol were getting ready to do Sammy Guevara's card stick. And as it was going on, Miro attacked Sammy Guevara from behind and beat the shit out of him and then attacked Fuego Del Sol beating the shit out of him too. And um, and then Sammy Guevara attacked Miro with a knee strike but while before because Miro was getting ready to throw Fuego Del Sol off the stage but Miro, but Sammy Guevara saved Fuego Del Sol and then Miro attacked Sammy Guevara and beat the shit out of him. And then Fuego Del Sol tried to come to Sammy Guevara's aid, but Miro beat the shit out of Fuego Del Sol, and then Miro successfully threw Fuego Del Sol off the stage and everything. And then and then, uh, and then, then as Miro done more damage on Sammy Guevara, Miro executed the game over to Sammy Guevara. And then... Miro stood tall and everything. That was cool. Andrade El Idolo cut a promo saying, I, I am an AEW to fight. And my, pers my assistant, Jose, knows better to interfere in my matches, unlike Chavo Guerrero Jr. And Ch so Chavo Guerrero Jr. paid the price by interfering in my matches. I, do, I win my matches in honor. And Pac, I didn't beat you last time because Chavo Guerrero Jr. interfered. But I will beat you again and everything. Which that was cool. And Mark Henry and and Mark Henry interviewed John Moxley and Eddie Kingston and Suzuki Goon, which are Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki. Well, Mark Henry was asking Suzuki Goon why they accepted the Lights Out match against John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, and Lance Archer was talking about, was saying, well, Mark, we accepted the fight because... When we were in Cincinnati, Ohio, I felt John Moxley had the hometown advantage. But here in New York, here in, New, here in 
Queens, New York. Me and Minoru Suzuki and myself are going to kick John Moxley and Eddie Kingston's asses all over Queens, New York. That Eddie Kingston was saying, well, Minoru Suzuki was saying something in Japanese, which I couldn't understand, and then Eddie Kingston cut him off talking shit, and then Lance Archer got pissed off and told Eddie Kingston not to interrupt Minoru Suzuki, and Eddie Kingston said, well, I can interrupt any whoever I want to, and then Eddie Kingston and Lance, Ar and La well, Lance Archer and Eddie Kingston were bickering back and forth and everything, and then Eddie Kingston left, and then was getting ready to leave, and John Moxley was talking about how he was going to beat the shit out of Minoru Suzuki, and how he was going to beat the shit out of Lance Archer, and everything, and then John, and then Eddie Kingston came back trying to get John Moxley to come with him, while John Moxley and Eddie Kingston leave, while Suzuki Goon is still standing there, and everything, and then Mark Henry says, well, we've heard enough talk, now it's time to go to the ring, for our main event and everything. Which that was cool. Now besides all that, Taz, Excalibur, and Ricky Starks done commentary throughout the whole show. Taz and Excalibur done, done awesome on commentary as usual. And Ricky Starks and Ricky Starks done great on commentary as as usual. And Don Callis done guest commentary along with Taz, Excalibur, and Ricky Starks during the match between the Super Click versus Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express. Don Callis done great on guest commentary. The referees for the event were Rick Knox, Paul Turner, Bryce Rimsburg, and Aubrey Edwards. Okay. Aub Aubrey Edwards refereed the match between CM Punk versus Powerhouse Hobbs. That was Aubrey Edwards, by the way. Rick Knox refereed the match between the Super Click versus Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express. Aubrey Edwards refereed the match between Men of the Year versus The Inner Circle. Bryce Rimsburg refereed the match between Proud and Powerful and the Lucha Brothers versus The Hardy Family Office. That was Bryce, R that was Bryce Rimsburg, by the way. Paul Turner refereed the match between Penelope Ford versus Anna Jay and Bryce Rimsburg that was Paul Turner, by the way. And Bryce Rimsburg refereed the match between John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus Suzuki Goon in a Lights Out match. All the referees done awesome as usual. Now, the match card that's been announced so far for A for AW Rampage. Oh, wait. Now, the match card for All Elite Wrestling's AW Dynamite that's been announced for Wednesday night. So far, it's been announced it's going to be Miro versus Sammy Guevara for the AEW TNT title. The Nightmare, the Nightmare Family, which are Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson versus Matt Seidel and Dante Martin. Adam Cole versus Jungle Boy. And... Anna J and Ty Conti versus The Bunny and Penelope Ford. Those are the matches that have been announced for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite Wednesday night. But the match card for that looks like it's going to be awesome. Looking forward to it and everything. Can't wait to see it. Now the match card that's been announced so far for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Rampage next fr on Friday night. It's going to be Orange Cassidy versus Jack Evans in a hair versus hair match. So the match card for AW Rampage on Friday night looks like it's going to be awesome as well. Can't wait to see that either. But anyway, I just wanted to come on here for a while and 
give them a review for All Elite Wrestling's AEW Rampage Grand Slam from two nights ago, which was September 24th, 2021. Like I said, it was awesome from start to finish. And with that being said, my name is Austin Honaker, and I will catch your ass down the road. Peace out.